Good evening, everyone, to the uh, December 6, 2018 version of the Hampton <coughs> Municipal Budget Committee. I hope you all join us, even those at home, in pledging allegiance to our republic. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, the very first thing on our agenda is to begin the introductions with Mr. LeBranch. Stephen LeBranch. Regina Barnes, Board of Selectmen Representative. David Maurer. Bob Ladd, Village District Representative. Mike Bloom. My name is Jones. Brian Warburton. Frank DeLuca, School Board Representative. Well, welcome. Uh, and we have uh, you know, a few people in the audience, including the esteemed town manager, Fred Welsh, Excuse me. and the esteemed finance director, Christy Pulliam, who will be assisting us along with other brains that are in the audience during the course of our budget considerations. Um, first up is the uh, information requests, uh, old business. Um, basically, we received two that were outstanding. Uh, one was uh, the pay difference between the current and uh, past park and recreation department head. Uh, I believe I emailed you all the ultimate response to that question was basically no difference at all, right, in terms of compensation. So uh, I assume we can mark that as satisfied, yes? Okay, no objection? Okay, uh, the default budget, as you know, was emailed by Christy, I believe, last week, I think Friday, um, and she also handed for a cause to have handed out uh, a printed uh, document representing the default budget. Uh, should we consider this request having been satisfied? Yeah, but I, I just had a comment, if I could. Sure. Um, is there a possibility that we can update this with the default numbers, like on the side over here, so we don't have to go through it? You know, what like the we, default amount on it? Yeah. Just that one extra column? Yes. And I'd like the two pages. The two pages, right? Okay. Well, I'm not sure I understand. Well, you know how we have to. Well, it says regular wages. Now we have to go in and find it. Right. Okay. So I'm saying on the front here. Oh, I see. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, no. Makes sense to me. Uh, I was thinking more about updating this the, the, the front sheet. The front sheet. Yeah. Put the, right the, the summary that, pages. Put, put it in the summary column. page. Put it in the summary page. Yes. And, and, yep. then you, and then you could see all the way across. That I like that better. This, what is it? Twenty pages or something? I like. I. Some, that's what. Yep. In the summary. Just. just I like Redo that. those and put it right in the default yeah. column. And then you have it all on one page where you can see it. Christine? In, your, in your summary in the front of your books? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Please. And Brian, just so you know, we did have a version that had the numbers right. on that sheet, I, and it was very confusing. Right. And so we put yeah. it aside and That's came up with that thought. version yeah. instead. Okay. Um, we did have, like, the Board of Selectmen and uh, the default numbers there and the prior years. And when you put the numbers in with those things, it was, confu just, yeah. it was a little confusing in our opinion. Okay. So that's why we had removed them. But I can... Um, Update that cover. It, yeah. it automatically fills to there. I just didn't yeah. reprint that would those. Be good. So I can reprint I those. I, right. So this, this printout is really a printout from the Excel spreadsheet that contains the full budget, right? Is that but what I'm hearing? that default one, no. No? Okay. No. But you I said can, it automatically filled in. I can, well, because they're linked. So I can link it. I can print the, I like the new that copy better. of the three holes. With the, um, on the three holes. Right. And can you uh, just email the, since it's already updating the spreadsheet, can you just email the uh, spreadsheet itself so we have a fresh copy of that? I can email the spreadsheet itself, yes, but the links are not going to work. It'll show up as a reference because it's in Well, I don't care about the links. I just want the dollar amounts in there. If I send the spreadsheet, though, in the format that it's in right now, mm -hmm. it's going to show up as a reference because it's going to reference the default budget. I'd have to go in and oh. hand fill all the numbers in. Okay, so you'd rather have me... You're talking about the whole budget spreadsheet, correct? Yes, you, yeah. you mail out the uh, mm -hmm. spreadsheet, uh, which was supposed to include the budget numbers, but the budget wasn't prepared yet, so that column is all empty all over the spreadsheet. For the default budget? The column for the default budget, yes. that's correct. And normally, of course, we get one with the default budget values there. 
Most and so I'm hoping to achieve what we normally get, which is a spreadsheet that has the default budget numbers in it, in addition to the others. That's and what I I'm hoping to achieve. I can print that out, and if you would like it in an Excel version, I will hand put all of the numbers in and send it to you in Excel. Great. That's all that's that's all that's Thank you. And since we just got this, uh, which we appreciate, uh, could we put it on the agenda for next Thursday the 13th to go over the default budget? Uh, so you want the default budget on the schedule for the 13th to discuss yeah. it? Yes. Um, Regina, do you object to that? No, I don't object. Okay, I have so a question let me do for it, do you. This. Is there an objective on an objection on Brian's request? No. You okay. said Thursday. I think you meant Tuesday. No, no we're not meeting Thursday. Tuesday. We're meeting we're the 13th. Next Thursday we're meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sunday the board meets Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> Here. Corrected. Okay, so we'll, we'll get that on Great, the thank you. request to Regina. I just have a question about what you just asked the finance director yeah. to. Now she has to go in and hand input figures. Can she just give it, is there a different way that you can give us numbers that we can see without having you having to input them? I can print them or send it as a PDF, but if you want it in Excel, I'll have to hand, because the default budget is in a different spreadsheet. So when that was done last year, I had to go in and hand, enter all of the numbers. And there's no other way to get that everything on one page without you having to do that? In a PDF or not in Excel, no. Because they're separate spreadsheets. I mean, we really going to make her do all that extra work right now? What's the difference with a PDF file? I mean, if it's... If it's right, that's what I say. If it's the same if information... If we can see everything why, on yeah. one page? Yeah. So if it's the same information, why not just get that and save her all, all that work? Exactly. I mean, it's the end of the year coming up. I don't you know, see, she's got a lot I agree of things with Regina. to do. There's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and she's yeah. got enough on her plate. I, I agree with, with, with Gina. Do the PDF, and you'll. I have think it as long as we it. can see it on paper. Correct. And I, you I, can I, look I, at it electronically. You just won't be able to see yeah. the formula. But if it matches the default, that's yeah. all we. That's all we really care about, right? Why reinvent the wheel? Right. Well, why put all that extra work on it right now? There's a lot of stuff. We're coming to the end of the year. A lot of stuff coming down the pike. But we're putting a, a big burden on her to what do I'm it saying. in Excel. Yeah, exactly. The PDF she can give gives it us PDF the same information. Easy, right? It's done. Yeah, it's done. done. Yeah. Right. You two are violently agreeing. Yeah. All right. Then the question yeah. on the table is whether or not we can classify the request for the default budget as now, at this moment in time, having been satisfied. That is the question. I'm satisfied. Everyone's happy with calling it satisfied? As We're it still is. waiting for information, are we? On the default budget. Right. We requested the default budget get done. And it has been done and apparently communicated to us in a manner that we find acceptable as a collective. Um, so, therefore, we can mock this as satisfied as it is without any, her having to do anything. Anyone having to do anything, I should say. Right? Well, she said she'd do this summary. Yeah. yeah so Which Mike. I think she has to print the pages off for Which that. is just a matter of, you know, click print. Yeah. yeah. But going in and changing... It's you know, and, and doing, because as she said, well, if she says, yeah, you know, you understand right. exactly. At least we'll get that. No, I know. Yeah, I think he's, he's lost. lost. Let us oh, because if I look at, if I look at the front sheet, or well, what I think the sheet that you're talking about, like this guy here, yeah, there, are 20, there are 20 of these pages yes, there are. So on the summary, OBS. and it is, in fact, the entire Excel spreadsheet and it will show for that section. It will fill and in the default field. Yeah. There you go. You right. have it. All on one sheet. But the reference, Christy, is to what? Summary. It's reference to another worksheet? Yes, where the default budget is built. Another worksheet. In another worksheet. So if you mailed out both worksheets, then we would be able to have that reference working, correct? I don't believe so. I thought that once you, if you mail them in a separate document, I don't think they're linked. They would have merged. I do not believe that is true. Well, there are. If you're using relative paths, they are, but you probably are not. But um, in any case, that's what I thought you were talking about was doing this particular thing, Stephen? Yes. Was this, and there are 20 pages of this. Right, yeah. Okay. For each of the uh, tabs, there is a similar, although more detailed breakdown of the same format. Really you are not talking about those, apparently. No, I'm not. Sorry. Okay, so we're all clear on what we're talking about? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'll just mark this as pending for now based on the format changes, okay? Okay, uh, to add anything to add, I, we, we have not seen or heard from the CIP yet. Remember we asked for that at uh, the last meeting. Um, I'm going to put it on the, the request, the info request, so we don't lose track of it. 
and, and I assume there's no objection to that. No. Are there any other additions that you wish to add to uh, information requests? We had a discussion, we've had several discussions on, and I want to be clear on these truck leases, these, these trash truck leases, and uh -huh. I, I wonder if it would be important, Mr. Chairman, if somehow you could compile and maybe summarize at next Thursday's meeting. I just want to be clear on what we're doing. Oh, you mean for when we're going over the default budget? For multi-year, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I think it's a mirror, I have some material I could compile. Okay. Most of what you guys have already seen so far. Right. I guess you want it in one spot, is that the idea? Okay. It'd be, yeah, I'd like to see that. Thank you. I'll update it later. Any other requests? Okay, great. We can move on to any other old business. Great. We're all up to date, huh? All right, let's move on to budget workshop for the town. The town clerk uh, would be welcome to join us if she wishes. Uh, is there any comments or questions on the town clerk's budget? Uh, the section that we'll be working on is was and for me was the town clerk section. Town clerk section of the town clerk. Elect budget. election registrations by themselves. Yeah. So the town clerk's <coughs> office. Uh, right. Any questions on that first section? Comments, Mr. Walbert. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome Shirley, and and I, as I've stated to, and I did this with the school board the other night too, and you know we hear a lot of discussion about people leaving town and people leaving their jobs. Would you announce to the public how many years you've been an employee with Town of Hampton? Nineteen. Nineteen years. Thank you. And you work in the rec department. So mm -hmm. another example of somebody who's not leaving and stayed with the town like most people have. And I want to thank you. I've known Shirley a, a long time, um, and congratulations on. And then hopefully in March you'll you'll still be Thank in that. You. I'm sure you'll be in that role. Um, I just had, and I'm going to make the same comment to you as I did to Donna Bennett. Um, years ago, Mr. Pluff remembers, the elected officials would put a warrant article in for their raises. I don't know why we get away from that. The reason for that was the public pretty much were pretty generous, whether it was 3% or 2%. They believed in what you're doing. And as you've seen recently, and I commend you, too, because you did put a 6% and you went down to 3%, I believe, uh, and I know why you did that. But the um, what's happened with default budgets, and you still work a great job, but if we get a default budget, you don't get your raise, but the non-union people do. That message is so unfair. So what I've said to Donna Bennett is, and I, and I don't know if she's going to do it this year, but I would highly urge you, if not this year, you start putting your raise in a warrant article. And we can fight for it. What's happening is, the people I talk to is, when you look at a whole town budget, they may like, they may like bits and pieces of it, and they do. Mm -hmm. But they can't vote for bits and pieces. They may love the town clerk's office and do it, guys do a great job. But unfortunately, there's other things in the budget that have come up that they don't like. So they're going to vote mm -hmm. down the budget. That's, I'm just trying to give you my philosophy mm -hmm. on why I think you should do that. The only other question, so, um, Deputy Town Clerk, and that's Cheryl. Yes, Cheryl yes. Hill, just another great lady. I'm so proud of her, too. So that's fine. I have no problem with that. Let me get on to the part-time wages. So you have an assistant clerk, both uh, one assistant clerk at five-year step, one at a start step. Both of those are Teamsters. They will be. One's not filled at this time. One is not. That's what I wanted to ask you. Which is the one that's not filled? The 21-hour. Uh, ah, uh, okay. The file clerk, that's, is that a um, non-union? Non-union. Okay. And leave, what, what is this fill for leave coverage based on seven weeks? Well, we have um, one of our, the bookkeeper has, she's at a point where she's been with the town for a very oh, long I time also. Yes. Um, and she has, I, I believe it's five week vacation. Um, That's then, what you uh, meant by leave. I'm sorry. And, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking leave like somebody's out on. No, you answered the to question. To cover when they're out. That's that's perfect. Um, other than that, I, I have no uh, problem with the uh, uh, town clerk's budget, only to what I said to you that I mm -hmm. recommend that if you still have time to shift. That's all I have for this part. Any other questions or comments on the town clerk's budget? Seeing none, we'll move on to voter registration section. Any questions or comments on voter registration? Seeing none, 
Next section will be election administration. Any questions or comments on election administration? Thank you very much for coming in and helping us with our budget. I appreciate thank it. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Next we have finance. Anyone have any questions about finance or finance in general? Uh, the only, first of all, uh, thank you, Christy. And, and uh, I didn't raise my hand, I'm sorry. And, and great, uh, I know it's a lot of stuff you, you have on your plate. I just want to point out that, you know, the bottom line, it looks like, you know, people say, oh, gee, it's an 8.81 negative, meaning uh, the budget's down 8.81%, 8, 8 but it's a little misleading because on line 4150139 3910 staff development, it went from, you know, uh, I don't know, $900 down to 760 So it's kind of, you know, so I want the pu I just want the public to know that even though we're glad of that, that, that the total number at the end. Can I ask you the question that I've asked uh, all the other departments and non-unions? So on the regular wages, um, is there a raise put in here for you in this line item? No. There is no raise? In that line item right there, no. Is there any any line item that has your raise in it? Um, there's a merit line in the budget that has possibility for non-union raises, but that's in the personnel administration section. I found it interesting last night at the school board. I commend the school district. They get rid of the merit bonus stuff. But, but there's not a pay increase in that line right, right. right Did you get a pay raise this year? Yes. You did get a pay raise this year? In 18, yes. In 18. Was it in last year's budget? On the merit line, yes. On the merit line. Yep. So we haven't seen, we'll look at that later. Then. It's in the merit line issue. Yeah, I'm not sure what night is That's fine. In and the I merit line is a, is, a, is a lump of about $39,000. Right, so they give the way they underfunded from whatever it is they actually give out in raises. That, so thank the fact you. that it's in the merit line item it's, is yeah, pretty I, meaningless. Yeah, you know what? Since the merit line item is the most fictitious line in the entire book. Well, you're absolutely right. In this chair's opinion. Uh, any further questions? I'll say that I have uh, no questions. Thank you. Any other questions, Mr. LeBranch? The, um, so the town treasurer is getting a 4% raise, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I believe that, yes, 4%. Hmm. Because I, and I, I know the, when I watched the uh, selectmen's meeting, the idea for the treasurer, the um, tax collector, and the and the uh, clerk was, and they had originally put in, they didn't get them last year, so then they sort of doubled it. Yes. And made it, they went from three to six. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, three. and I think the same thing happened with the treasurer. Is that sound about right? It, she didn't get one last year, so. She did not, know. So you put like two for last year and two for this year? Right, with the non union had gotten, yes. Yeah elected official. It's just that I noticed with the uh, the others, they kind of pared that back. Yes. And uh, I just wondered if that if it's appropriate to consider doing the same for this um, instead of doing a cumulative type of thing. I'm not saying that a person shouldn't get a raise every year, and then it's cumulative in, it, in going forward. But you didn't get one last year. That doesn't mean you should get double the one this year. Uh, right. And it didn't, we didn't do that for the treasurer, uh, the um, town clerk or the tax collector. So I'm making a motion to reduce that to 2%. Second. Sorry, who was the second? I was second. Only to follow well, along. Let's get some background on this. Only uh, to Chris follow along with what was Two done for the others. Right. Christy. Okay. Three. Yes. What is she currently making? $19,380. Okay. You're talking about an $800, roughly an $800 increase, right? Yes. Right. So, yeah. Yep. I'd rather, <coughs> I'm not objecting to the motion and I will proceed with it, but I want to share with you um, that we do have a final review and I'd rather have these small motions lumped into one, basically, but if you want to go forward with this one, I'll be happy to administer it. I'd prefer to go forward. Okay, with it right fine. Now. Uh, the motion is to reduce uh, 
the raise on the town treasurer from a 4% increment to a 2% increment. Is that correct, Steve? Yes. And what's Is there the any discussion on the motion, Mr. Frank? And the rationale? It, it is, it, it's appropriate because we, we did the same thing. The selectmen did the same thing for the raises for the tax collector the and the town clerk. And this is the third person. This is the town uh, elected treasurer. And so the others had done the same thing, had added, because they didn't get one last year, they added it together. Brian's point of putting it in as a Warren article is probably a little bit better because when a budget doesn't pass and it's put in it like this, right. they don't end up getting the raise. So if it's so that's the rationale behind what Brian's talking about. And that's the rationale for me making this motion. Okay. Could I say something before we vote? Oh, please. Regina. I would be okay with this as well because it is what we did with the uh, right. town clerk and the tax the tax collector. Um, is that who the other person is? The tax collector, right? The th and then this is the third elected official. So right. I agree with that logic. I think it makes sense to do that. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, I have some. The uh, history of this, as I understand it, was that all of the people mentioned were originally plugged in at a 4% raise. And then the Board of Selectmen subsequently reduced it to 2%. Isn't that true? No. no. No? That's okay. not how I recall it. I believe that the tax collector, I don't know for sure, but I'm, I believe the tax collector and the town clerk had put in 6%. Oh, 6%. And percent, I remember four, okay. that they, when they came to the Board of Selectmen, they had brought up to the board that they could reduce, that they were willing to reduce the line right. to 3%. That's correct. Yeah. So. And that was the final result, a 3% right. increment? Yeah, I don't think yeah. it was the board. I don't believe that the Board of Selectmen took the initiative and took, reduced those two and mm -hmm. did not reduce the treasurer. I recall it was the town clerk and tax collector who sat here and requested at the very beginning that their pay increase be reduced to 3%. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so. but right now we're talking about the town treasurer pay. Correct, and, and that was at and, four. And as I recall, um, your testimony to the Board of Selectmen was that pretty much what you said tonight, it was uh, basically a two plus two for a 4% increment. And you also noted that uh, the treasurer did not request the raise, that you just did this as a matter of custom, I guess. I had informed her that I had put 4% in. Yeah. She did not come to me and ask for 4%, no. Right, right. That is correct. So the treasurer did not ask for any raise whatsoever? She did not come to me and ask for a raise. Okay. I informed her, though, that I was putting a raise and in. And she didn't object? Correct. Right. But she did not ask for any raise? Okay. Correct. <laughs> That is correct. All right, so now we're all clear. The top, oh, well, there was one other point. The Board of Selectmen was uh, confused that night, as I recall, as someone on the board asked, well, how many hours a week does she work? And no one knew. And the board proceeded to give it a 4% raise. Well, we know in the Budget Committee, because we had her before the Budget Committee a few years ago, in which she herself testified she works five hours or less per week. Five hours or less per week. That's how much she works. So now everyone knows. Yeah. There'll be no mystery the next time it's brought up, perhaps at other boards. We've got it on video if you'd like to see it. Yeah, I believe I've gotten my uh, answer prior to now. Oh, okay. So uh, the motion is uh, to reduce the proposed 4% increment on the town treasurer to 2%. Uh, everyone understands the motion? All in favor, raise your hand. Uh, Barbara, that would be everyone but Frank and myself. <laughs> and Frank is going to vote. Oh, I am abstaining from voting. You're abstaining from yeah. voting, okay. Thank you. Uh, as we continue on with the town clerk's budget, any further? You mean finance? Finance. Oh, excuse me, uh, finance. Huh? Any further questions or comments? It's good. It's good. I have a couple. Okay. Um, so we've been, as I understood, you know, we had this special town warrant earlier in the year, and as I understand it, the way it read, as I remember how it read, that we were going to do the temporary pipe rental uh, for contingency purposes, and we were going to pay that out of the 2018 operating budget, and then when the bond actually 
is converted to cash, we'll use that cash to backfill the 2018 budget. Was I understanding that correctly? We don't backfill with cash. The, right, when the right. bond was recognized, then the, it was the charges that had been hit to the general fund have already been moved out and have been moved out for at least the last two months of my reporting, if not longer. Okay, so in the actuals of the 2018 budget, I'll find no expense for uh, the uh, temporary sewer pipes? In the financials for the end of October, there should be no um, temporary sewer pipe cost in there. The cost to fix the pipe um, of course, in that March, be that's there, yeah. in there. Yeah, sure. But the temporary pipe and the rental for the temporary pipe is, no, is part no, of the Warren no, article right. and is therefore removed from those financials that okay. are online. Okay. I wanted to get crystal clear on that. Thank you. So it's not in the, it's not in the actuals at all okay. in the terms of the uh, budget book. Correct. Yeah. Well, in terms of the budget book, I had to go back and make sure that I wasn't doing it in September. I don't believe that it's in here for because these are only at the end of September. I said right. the end of October. No. I know right. I did not. Right. I don't. I would have to look at the DPW budget to see if it was in September. I'm almost positive it was removed. But so was the accounting mechanism that you originally paid for some things out of 2018's budget and then subsequently backfilled it. Um, we paid for all things out of 2018 <laughs> budget until the Warren article was passed right. and so I don't know if I had moved everything by the time I produced the September financials or not because right. everything had been paid out of there since right. then mm -hmm. there has been a journal entry timing wise I am not positive you asked me if I if it was in this book for sure or not and I'm not sure of that I know that it is no longer and if you look at the financials that are on the town's website it's it not included no in that <laughs> right. but I don't know if it's in the September sure. number I would have to look okay. and see Okay. If you would like to know so for sure. So in your projections to the Board of Selectmen, uh, we can be sure that the sewer pipe costs are not in those projections, right? Correct. Even okay, when great, I was... Great. But we need to also assume that somewhere in our budget book where it says actuals, a number or more are maybe inflated because of what Christy just described. Is that accurate, Christy? Mm, not necessarily. You said they weren't necessarily not in the book. And so shouldn't we assume that some numbers will be somewhat inflated because they might still be in the book? I don't like to assume things, so. Well, let's see. Well, I thought you just suggested we assume that it might be in there. I think it's on that line. I don't understand what the question is right now. Well, the question is basically uh, to make sure that the numbers we're looking at are the right. numbers we think they are. Um, and, and Christy will get back to us on that, I assume, right? There's yes. just too much to ask if you're not knowing. Well, I would just think that if you're if you want to know what the actual numbers are, we shouldn't be look, referring to 930 anymore. We should be referring to October financials, right. yes. or probably by next week I will have the November, November yeah. financials done. So, if you would like me to update your summary sheets again, I can do that because it's that just would be great. a link, and then I can print them out for you, and it will have the November numbers in it. That would be great. I'm looking at this, and I believe the line, if I have the correct line, um, I do not believe that any of the pipes, because there's only $6,000 if I have the correct um, well, we'll check account it out number we'll here. So. Yeah. Um. And you're also keeping track, because you're going to present to us on our final night, as I recall, uh, the actual DRA accounts with the dollar amounts, as we may or may have not amended them during our budget workshops, right? For the summary that's in your books? No. Is that what you're referring to? For the final review, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to bring in uh, a sheet reflecting the dollar amounts for the DRA line items, right? It's in the book, in the front. Those are municipal line items, aren't they? I thought there was a two page or a three page DRA summary at the very beginning, I believe. Yeah. In oh, front oh, of oh, the oh, 20 right, page. Right, right. No, I'm talking about see when we make changes, like Mr. Little Branch motion just passed. Oh, yes. So that's a change. But I can't bring that into the final review if the changes aren't made until the final review. So. Well, you just made a change. Well, I can make that one in, yes. Right. I just want to highlight that that is how we're capturing such changes, okay? Mm -hmm. It's through Christy you know, making yeah. final update to this page for our final review, right? I just want to get clear on that. Okay, thank you. I found it curious when I was listening to you in a Board of Selectmen's meeting talking about the audit, uh, and there was a note in there about the town treasurer 
uh, have uh, having to manage the conservation fund. In my memory, am I remembering that correctly? The town treasurer that is does hold the conservation right fund. But there was a, you made reference to an auditor's note that stated that. I didn't make reference to an auditor's okay. note. Well, I think well, the chairman may have made reference to a. I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll get back to it and get my memory totally refreshed on that. Um, we did return a prorated amount of money to uh, Experience Hampton for that Lafayette uh, project that was real one, yeah. correct? Yes. Uh, what account was that money taken from when it was dispersed to Experience Hampton? The Warren article account. Okay, thank you. I think that's uh, about all I'm going to harass you with. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I Ms. just Blair. had a point of information. Yes. When you got the revenue stream available for the bond to do the sewer pipe, did you reimburse the department the previous cost of the rental pipe was coming out of? Yeah, that's what we just yeah. did. From the yeah. bond yeah. money? Yeah. And just to be clear, we have no revenue stream because it's SRF, so we have right. no cash. There's been no cash transferred to the town yet. It's not like a normal bond. Like when we close on a bond from the municipal mm -hmm. bank, there's a cash transfer. And so there is cash. However, this is SRF reimbursement. So we just, um, did we even submit it yet? We've been working this week to submit the first request for the disbursement from the SRF. Yeah. But the, um, all of the expenses, if they're not out of these numbers, they are definitely out of the numbers in the financials that I have been reporting on and put into a uh, fund that we are creating for that. Okay. To track all of the expenditures so when the auditors come in, we can just have all of that right there for them. Thank you for that. Thank you for that question, both. Is there any other questions or comments on the finance budget? No, great. Thank you. On to everyone's favorite executive. <coughs> Mr. Town Manager Frederick Welsh, how are you, sir? Very good, sir. And you? Pretty well. I assume you're uh, going to be representing the Executive budget, I well, I, since I'm from the executive budget, I'm here. To, the hell, uh, and I'm here. I'll represent it. Okay. So, are there any questions on the first section, which is board selectman's budget? Great. Uh, Tower manager's budget. Questions, comments. Mr. Warburg. Good evening, Mr. Welch. Sir. So, are there any raises put in here for you and the assistant town manager? And there are not. There are not. There are not. Okay. Um, under staff development, where it says uh, oh, NHMA conference, uh, I don't have, we won't talk about that one, but training workshops for assistant town manager. Is that like new training to do things or retraining or certifications or what is that? When the legislature has the wisdom to, uh, or the executive departments of the, town, of the state have wisdom to change the, uh, uh, the statutes and, and uh, various things that they control, it many times requires us to go for training in those new statutory procedures. So do you go to those trainings too? When I have to, yes. And what type of training? I'm just out of curiosity. What, because the title of assistant town manager also, and not in the detail, but at the front it says assistant town manager slash human resource director. So I'm just kind of clarify. What is the training? Are they four day trainings? Are they a month train? What does the training involve? There are several different types of training. Some of the, some of them are web webinars. Some of them are in house in Concord. Some of them are in various other cities and towns across the state where they have where they hold their annual you know, get-togethers for discussing things like uh, new personnel practices that are put in by various departments in the state. Uh, the Department of uh, Labor, for instance, changes regulations periodically, and we have to go train on those. The, um, I, don't, I don't think I have anything else under uh, the minutes transcriptions. Um, I watch all of these. Who does the transcribing uh, of the BLS meeting? Do we have a person that does that? They we watch the a, tape? We have a young lady they who watch does the that, tape, yes. Yeah. Uh, that's all I have. Any other questions or comments on board selectman? No. I mean, the time manager? Uh, budget committee, I think we can handle on our own, right? Uh, <laughs> trustees of the trust fund. <laughs> Any questions or comments on that? Great. Wasn't that pleasant? Oh, can I just ask Fred? I'm sorry. Well, it was pleasant. 
<laughs> no, seriously, because, no, Fred's going to, this is an easy one. Um, we used to have, we had the lifeguard account for years under the park we did. And just so the budget committee members know, and I think Mr. Welch explained this, but I just want the public to know that the reason, and it's a good reason, why Fred has kept a dollar under lifeguards under general safety, uh, other safety services. Up until 2006, the state of New Hampshire supplied lifeguards for the two town beaches. Right. They then in turn would get a bill from the town of Hampton. And so it was revenue, which, you know, which is good. But the problem has been with the state having this, you know, the lifeguards do a great job. They're nowhere near staffing than when I ran it. It's just, right. it's, they don't pay them anything. And just so the people at home, Fred and, and before Renee, Diana tried to get for Sun Valley, one lifeguard for Place Cove, one lifeguard can't get the help. But it's good that you kept that in there because you need to have right for DRA person, whatever, because if anything should be one way or the other, you have to have it, either well, income or outgo, right? As you know from yeah. being in charge of the beach for so many years, <laughs> yeah. and us working together down there on these issues, yeah. uh, we have to have the availability to somehow put funds in the budget or charge funds to the budget, so we have to put a dollar in to keep the subline open. So in fact, if we are successful in finding personnel, then we're going to try to hire them. We're obviously and work with the state on doing that. Yeah, and I made one mistake. The income was really for the state, but as Mr. Welch knows, we actually had one time had two lifeguards at Place Cove and one at Sun Valley. And because we had the plethora of lifeguards, but I feel badly that that has gone, getting people to do those jobs, but I want to commend you for Putting, leaving that dollar in there. Because a lot of people don't realize why you leave that a dollar, right? If I don't leave the dollar, we can't go, spend from the line. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you, Fred. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Mora. Fred, how many lifeguards do we have at the main beach? We have zero. Interesting you say that. because That's the well, town. That's the state beach. Yeah, the main that's beach the state, is the state beach is something different. The main beach is the state beach. Yeah. yeah. So how many lifeguards are there? I can't tell you that because they don't provide us that information. And it fluctuates from year to year. Yeah, the does. reason I'm sa asking that question is I saw a little blurb during the summer. Mm -hmm. And it was at the State Beach. <clears throat> and it was lifeguards training and everything. It was fabulous. Right. And I, remember being, and I remember being at the, this meeting the year before when it was like, we can't get lifeguards. There's no way around. So it's got seven, eight lifeguards. What does everybody talk about? They're all state lifeguards. That's correct. That's correct. It's and all the state pays their pay. That's, that's correct. correct. That is correct. Thank you, sir. Okay. Back to the <coughs> budget. Uh, assessing. Uh-huh. As you know, uh, assessing is being outsourced, right, Mr. Welsh? I will let the assessor talk about that. Well, he doesn't work for the town, you do. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yes, he does work for the town. Well, <laughs> as a, as a, by contract, he's yeah. not an employee, right. is what I was implying. Yep. Yes. Uh, so we are outsourcing the assessor function. That is correct. And uh, so that's why the budget book looks kind of weird. Or at least substantially well, different. Substantially there's different. There's a difference from last year. Right. So, uh, are there any uh, questions on the assessing budget or comments? I have quite a few, but I'd rather start over there because it always looks like I'm jumping out of Mr. the chair. Mr. Branch. Can I, uh, can I suggest that perhaps we invite uh, Mr. Tinker to the table so that perhaps... Oh, he's he happy to come to the table. Uh, and, uh, I'm happy to have him at the room. table. If we have comments or questions, we wish to direct to him. Yes. Yeah. But you don't want to invite him now? Anytime he wishes. If you would, please, Ed. He's driven I mean, No one's here. asked yes, until just okay. now to talk to him. <laughs> well, I just thought it would be nice to invite him to the table. Um, oh, also, thank you. Scott Marsh from MRI. He's oh. a super assessing supervisor. He's your yeah. boss? How are you? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Welcome. he can fill you in on contracts and, and the, the, that detail more so Got than it. I. Got yeah. it. Thank you. Any thank other you. questions or comments <laughs> on assessing, Mr. Ladd? Uh, what is the difference in cost between when the town did it with an employee? Now that's been outsourced. I think you can see that in the budget. There's like sixty thousand dollars worth of cost difference. Yeah. Well, people at home can't see. That. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I believe you can. So yeah. there's about a sixty thousand dollar cost differential. Yeah. Okay. And do you, can you explain a little bit why that is? We don't. We no longer have a, an assessor that is here full time working in the office. As an employee, we now have an assessor working on a contractual basis through an assessing firm. So this is not full-time work as it stands right now. 
So essentially, you're moving from full time to part time. Yeah, in, a, in essence, yeah, yeah because it's, a, it's outside contract at right. this point. I just wanted to get simplified as much as I could for this mind here. Any more questions, Bob? No. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Frank. Uh, when you outsource, uh, Mr. Waltz, when you outsource the position, then you did some cost savings by uh, salary, basically, right? Because it's salary and benefits. Uh, benefits. Yes. And part of that benefit would also be contributions to the state uh, retirement fund as well? That's correct, because they're not employing someone, so we don't pay into the fund. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? Mr. Wobber. Okay, I have, I have several, and bear with me. I did talk to Ed Tinker a little bit and Scott before the meeting, so let me start off by, uh, I want to ask a question, Mr. Welch, and if Selectman's Rep wants to comment too, that would be appropriate. There are two functions that the Selectman, or, or two uh, positions in this town that the Selectman have direct authority over. That's town manager and the assessor. There's actually three. Okay, what's, what's the third one, but in the case? The town attorney. Well, that's just, that's recent. What the town attorney was working for the Selectman, I'm saying, the, for several years. So but by law, the, the right. attorney works for the for okay. the for the selectman only, and so does the assessor. Right. Well, we right, and and you know you're quoting RSA, so I just want to make up the public at home knows that the selectmen are the assessors. So my train of thought is this: on September 9th, was it 9th or something, September of this year, I sat at home and watched a presentation by the assistant town manager making a proposal to the board of selectmen to outsource something that they control. Uh, did I, I, and I had several calls, so I guess my question is, was this proposal to outsource the assessor brought to you by the Board of Selectmen to go this route? The, the town assessor was going to retire, and he did. Mm -hmm. uh, we then had, uh, had to ask the Selectmen to make a choice as to whether or not they wish to hire a new assessor or they wish to look at a contractual out of the assessing function, that is the higher professional on the outside to come in and do whatever work needs to be done. They opted to do that. So as a result, we signed a contract with a firm to in fact provide those assessing services to the town during the course of the year. If that was the case, I didn't get any impression from selectmen's meetings and didn't hear anybody say this is what we want to do. And you're telling me that the selectmen actually agreed I don't know when it was or what phone uh, conversations. I just want to be clear, and that's fine if the selectmen, all five of them or whoever said, this is, the this is the route we want to go, but I didn't see that stated. Well, all I know is that that's what I was directed to do by the board. Okay. All right. So that being said, we pride ourselves on great service in this town. And we, you know, we created the drive-up window years ago to pay taxes. We allocated additional resources for town clerk's office. We, people can pay online, they can do whatever. So in the rec department, on and on, and we can talk about services. If John Doe, who's 84 years old, wants to on a Monday morning at 9.30, like he used to, to walk in the assessor's office and see Mr. Tinker, if he has a question on his assessment, he no longer can do that. Is that correct? If Mr. Tinker's not there at that time, on that day, he can no longer do well, that. Well, then that's, that's my point. So we. And, and I, I'm just putting my mindset, and I'm a taxpayer too, right? So I'm putting my mindset in with taxpayers saying, now here we go. I'm going to use the word protocol because we have a lot of protocols going on. So I get, you know, when I look at it, I haven't got into the cost yet, but the protocol is, well, you've got to come. And I said this to Ed Tinker, and so if, well, if I'm here on Wednesday, you've got to come on Wednesday. Well, we could make an arrangement. It just seems to me that there's going to be a lot of, a lot of people expressing that you know all the taxes they pay now we got to come when they tell us we got to come and, and and do that so that's a part that I, I think is is very questionable. I want to go back to the cost savings because I, I don't know if anybody read thoroughly this agreement because I want to highlight a couple points here. First of all, I, and and Fred, I'm not you know understand when I ask these questions. I'm asking them because from a, a layman's point of view. And having been on boards, though, I, I find it interesting that an assessing contract, uh, a, a contract within a, uh, an organization, and I know Alan Gould, I've known him for years, another former police chief, he's done pretty well for himself, yeah. right? So 
this municipal resource agreement is signed by you. But That's why right. wouldn't the, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen sign it since Be they still work for the Selectmen? Because the Selectmen have no power to sign contractual agreements under the state law. Okay. Um, okay, answer that question. On section, on page two of eight, under assisting town attorney a town related outside council in preparation of experts for the town of Hampton in tax abatement cases, prior to September of 2018, would Mr. Tinker have walked upstairs to the town attorney and did, did the same thing? Only if the attorney asked him to. Those are, those are specialized situations where council asks for the uh, assessor. And, uh, in fact, we're undergoing a, a particular case right now where the assessor is working with town, with town council to, in fact, uh, effectuate a response and or an answer to a, to a case that's before the court. At the bottom of the page, we believe that the task outline in task number one above can be completed in approximately, I love those approximate, it's like if I said to my wife, that lawn's going to cost us approximately $150 and the bill comes, it's $450, in approximately $325 to $400 hours annually. If the required time is significantly different, such that Municipal, Re Re Municipal Resources, Inc. requires more or less effort, both parties agree to renegotiate the scope and fees. Then I'm, and I'm going somewhere with this because I don't believe for a minute uh, we're, we're going to be saving thousands. And the other thing that concerns me, there's a clause in here that says the contract can be terminated at any time. However, in consultation with MRI, they're going to tell you well, wait a minute, we've done all this work up till now, so it wouldn't be by the month or calculate if they're eight months in and we owe them four months, let's say, in a year. From my own, when I read the wording in here, it could be actually more than that because they could say, well, wait a minute, I did more work here and we've got to add this to the bill. The, the, the thought that I have behind this is going back to what I originally said, and I'm going to see if my other colleagues have any more thoughts of, or questions of Mr. Tinker or Mr. Marsh. And I certainly appreciate Ed's work here, and, and the assessment department, the role itself is important. But the thought process in this is the following. Why in September of 2018, with three months to go in the year, did we rush to create an outside contracting? Because if the, if the mood in town is to contract, is to outsource areas of town, and you and I have had these discussions in the corporate world where Liberty Mutual, they outsource 60% of the departments, let's say, and guess what they do? They get rid of six vice presidents. Because the question's going to be asked here, if we're going to keep continue to outsource things, we don't need all the management in town. And that's, that's, a, that's a truism. So why would that discussion, this is an important function. These are people's tax bills. These are people that have serious questions. We had one this year where the board did not hear the resident. So now he'd have to go to Meredith or come here on a Wednesday. I just, I, I and, and I appreciate looking at how to do business differently. And, and you've done that in several areas. I, I have no problem, but when I hear about outsourcing and assessing function, and I've seen it and, and been there and done that, and how we're going to save money, it's not only about saving money. It's now saying the taxpayers, even though Mr. Marsh said, well, if they have another date, they want to come in. People don't react that way. They look at town hall, it's open 8 to 5. I'm going to come in and ask my question. I think it's going to be a, a PR nightmare for us, along with the cost. But those are the original questions, the initial questions I have on this. I will tell you at the final review, I will have more in-depth questions on this. I don't think, uh, and, and it's certainly no slight, I'm very familiar with what Municipal Resource has done. Ed Tinker, you know, admirable, and, and Scott as well. But my, my issue with this and is, I, I, I just think that it, it's, we're going down a road, which I'm not sure that we needed to do, but as long as I understand that that assessing function still reports to Regina and the other Board of Selectmen, that's not going to change, correct? That is correct. And so the last question I have is, because this is John Doe on the street saying to me, well, wait a minute, Brian. Okay, 132000 next year. We still got uh, a deputy in town hall. Um, the assist, the uh, deputy assessor is, is, do I understand that, 86000 a year? No. Nope. Regular wages? What is that? That's two people. That's two people. So 
Okay, I'm sorry. The assessed or assistant, which is non-union, excuse me, that's 53000 roughly a year. So we have that position in town hall, and then the assessing clerk, which is by Teamster Union Agreement. Maybe Mr. Tinker can answer this, or both of you, because this is an important piece. What role are these two people going to play? And I find it interesting, are, they two, are those two folks going to go to Ed Tinker with questions, or are they going to go to the selectmen with questions? Because they no longer have somebody physically in town hall that they work for, whether it was Ed Tinker or Bob Esty or whoever going back 30 years. I guess it depends upon the question. And you and I both know that sometimes the questions are, what is my assessment and how is it derived? Can I look at my assessment card? And that's pretty much a function for a clerk to answer and show and, and to try to explain the card to them so they understand how it's computed and so forth. If they're going to file for an abatement, that must go to the Board of Selectmen. Or if they have a question regarding uh, some item in the statute that they feel is incorrect, that has to go to the Board of Selectmen by law. And that's where it's going to have to go. But if what the happened? Selectmen decide at that point that it's going to go to the firm they have hired for resolution, that's their decision. But what happens if you get a serious, what a, a, pub, a member of public would say, a serious assessment issue that before it goes to the Bureau of Land folks and, the, and, the, and they go through the Selectmen, they have to intervene before they even go there. They need to go and deal with the assessor. So that could take the office hours one day a week. That may take three months. So is this person supposed to go up to Meredith, New Hampshire? And you mean Concord? Well, I it'd Concord. be Concord, yeah. Okay, but you see but my point. It just seems to me <coughs> that that's going to be an issue. And you know, people say, mm -hmm. "Well, gee, you know, uh, maybe it won't." But these are the questions that people ask. Actually, these haven't been asked. I brought it up because I wanted some feedback, and everybody said, "Gee, Brian, you're right again." I, I just. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not feeling good about this and, and understand why, so. The statute hasn't changed. If, if uh, let's just, because we're talking to each other here, yes. let's just assume that you get a tax bill and you're very unhappy with that bill uh, and you have until March 1 of each year to file a formal abatement request for the Board of Selectmen. That formal request goes to the Board and the Board determines what happens with that request because they are the assessor by statute, okay? If they decide to assign that to uh, MRI for investigation and for uh, a meeting with you or for a consultation dealing with that particular problem that you identify and you wish to have resolved, then they're going to come and identify that and resolve it with you and try to get to the bottom line of this so that you're happy and the assessment is corrected if need be. If you file, you know as well as I do that the board has until I believe it's um, June, June, 30th. June 30th, yeah, mm -hmm. June 30th to resolve those issues, and if not, you were then free to file with the Board of Land and Tax Appeals of the Superior Court. That's the state law, and those things have to, they happen all the time. We, we end up with five or six abatement requests that go to BTLA or the Superior Court each year. Superior Court's more difficult now because you've got to file everything by computer. And they, they we have a case that somebody filed the other day, and uh, actually several months ago, and the, the court doesn't have it yet. The computer system isn't up to date enough to give it to them. The, the so. only final comment and question I have, Mr. Chairman, is the following. All throughout this document, you see your signature, Mr. Sullivan's signature, Mr. Gould's signature. I don't see any particular reference that people who have assessing questions will deal with the assessor and, if need be, the Board of Selectmen. It says that you they will have conduct meetings in public with staff, Board of Selectmen, uh, seasonal folks that come in, whatever. But I'm, I'm not getting a, a touchy-feely that the Selectmen are still heavily involved with this. And, and I think if you read this, I think others would agree. I, I, I think it's... Uh, not, nothing is going to change from the way it was right, before well, until now because the statute won't allow it to. They're going to have to honor the statute. That's all I have for now, Mr. Chim. Thank you, Mr. Wilbur. Any other questions or comments on assessing? Fred, I think the major concern is, uh, while we may be saving significant, not somewhat significant dollars here, uh, we wonder, you know, what the true cost of that savings is, and likely, perhaps, it might fall under the category of a quality of service. And so that's I think that's the major new. theme of the problem that people have. That's something that will be determined as time goes yeah. along. And I know the selectmen are reviewing this. They're looking at it. They're paying attention to it. 
and uh, they are you know, going to critique this on a regular basis, and if it's not working, they'll have a meeting with MRI to either make it work or we'll end, end up having a negotiation and a contract. It's just the way fact of life works. Well, um, I appreciate that. I just wanted to get clarity on it because I think that is the main root of most people's concerns. That, that I'm right now we have people coming in every day asking questions of the assessing office. Right. And those questions are being answered or they're being referred properly. And uh, Ed is here uh, one day a week uh, to answer those questions and uh, if, he need, if need be. And he can be here more often if need be to take care of the individual items. And he's got a couple of items he's working on outside of that schedule. So we're not having a problem with trying to satisfy folks. If we have a problem, we're going to know real quick. Okay. So there will be adjustments uh, as the... Uh, as need be. Right. So we're going to maintain quality. That's a, that's a firm management position, right? It is a management position, and uh, we, in fact, have a higher quality standard here with MRI than some of the other towns in the region. Well, I'm primarily, concerned, I'm primarily concerned with Hampton's standard and it not declining and ideally actually advancing a little. I don't see uh, where we've had a decline as of this point in Well, time. we won't yet. Yeah, yeah, and true. if we do... There'll, You'll make there'll be an issue brought before so the that, selectmen that's, to satisfy that's, that's the nature of my question. And the other one was when Brian was asking a question, um, it struck my mind that what if the clerks, right now we have two well, We have two clerks budgeted, right? We have two employees in the office, yes. Right. One, 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 one clerk and an assistant assessor. Right. Charlie right. Jones is the and, and, and so we're going to add one next year, right? No. No. Okay. No, no. Those are the two. Those are the, two. Those are the only two that are going to be there. Both of those are the part-timers? You have, no, you have two full-timers. Full, full, full-time now. They're both full, full-time. Full-time. So we have two full-time employees in there. And I think the question you were asking is, what if they have questions? Not if the public has questions, but what if they have questions? Do they go to the Board of Selectmen uh, or, uh, up the chain of command, so to speak? Well, questions will come up the chain of command because that's the idea of having a chain of command. Exactly. If it doesn't, but you don't know so what's going on. So their chain of command would be the Board of Selectmen, right? Well, the end of the function. chain would be the selectmen, yes. Yeah. They so have the authority. Would, so what I do is I will receive phone calls or emails from Charlene or the clerk. So you'll have direct communication with the clerk at their email initiative? Email or phone calls, correct. And oh, okay. And the Great. other function that we've implemented now is uh, having uh, remote access <laughs> to the uh, vision system. The data and system. We have now remote yeah. access into the computer. So that we're available in case of any issues or questions arise, we can go on and, and answer questions. Right. But in the, time the existing manner. personnel in the assessing office yep. will be able to contact Ed on their own yeah, initiative or, or if they have a question or a problem. Yeah. That, am I yeah. hearing that right? And in an emergency, uh, let's say the state has an issue. In an emergency, we can answer those questions in the office, or we can ask Ed to answer those questions. Right, but who can initiate it? Is, is because it now the Ed? it's the office that initiates it. Okay, so it'll be the clerk or the deputy, they can, yeah. they can make that. I think that is key, Brian, because they still have the full knowledge base there during office hours by being able to contact Ed, and I wanted to highlight that. But I think you're um, still going to another layer where you're, well, you know. I, 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 can I, I say a point of one experience? Second, I'm still my floor here. No. Uh, I'm making accusations. And it's great to see you again, Ed. Nice uh, to see you. I, I see that Regina is just dying to yell at me about something. So go ahead, Well, I would like to tell you about how the procedure that I've been using is working as a selectman communicating with Charlene and uh, our tax assessor, who is still Ed Tinker, which is very important because we're talking about assessing. We're talking about the valuation of the town. So we want that to be consistent as it has been for as long as at least uh, Ed Tinker has been our assessor. And MRI, have we had historic history of using MRI before we now outsource our assessing? Do we have any history of the town using them? Uh, well, with, with, with some of the employees, we've had history. Uh, Paul McKenney, who works for MRI, he, um, was <coughs> employed in the past with um, vision, vision appraisal. He helped um, complete the 2011 revaluation. Um, so he's, on, he's with MRI. So all, the, all of the staff is available to assist with any questions, concerns, based on the, the staff's uh, staff's questions or okay, good. Yeah. And how long is was the agreement that we just signed for the MRI agreement that you signed? That's an annual agreement, that's subject to renewal and re renegotiation if necessary. And last time I checked, the board of board of selectmen was still. 
planning on reassessing that after the year has been completed before we That's sign another correct. agreement. As we do with all contracts, we go back and review them at the end of their term. Right. And I had several discussions with Ed Tigger prior to uh, all this happening, and we had gotten a letter from him saying that he was planning on resigning in a couple weeks. Action needed to be made. Uh, the way I looked at it, I had several discussions with Fred. I had a lot of discussions with the assistant town manager, as he is the human resource officer, the human resource manager for the entire organization of Hampton and everything that falls under that organization. And uh, as I said, I met with both Ed and him separately, but during the same time period. And I already thought that if any way we could keep Ed Tinker on board as our assessor, whether or not he's working directly for us or working through a consultant or private company, however you want to look at, it would be beneficial. The other thing MRI offers is um, if Ed is not available or he's only going to be here certain days a week, there are other offices that we could use if we needed to. We have a selection. And also if there's any <coughs> major issues that happen with any of these cases where people are objecting the town of Hampton and you know they maybe not want to always deal with Ed Tinker, that we have the option of maybe finding someone else because they're a firm that have several of the same people. The cost savings is beneficial, but at the same time, it's like we have a tax and assessor, and in two weeks, we won't have a tax assessor. So the decision has to be made. There's no waiting on it. So I want to say also that I talk to Shalene on a constant basis before I even go upstairs to management when I come into this town hall. And I know that she is able to contact Ed Tinker. She says it's the same as it's always been. He's just not physically there. So I think so far it's worked out, and as long as it works fine with the public, I understand Brian Warburton's concerns, and that did, I thought of that, you know, not having a physical assessor here. But at the same time, we have Shalene, she's been here for a long time, and she has an assistant. So we have to do what we have to do. And I think that the Board of Selectmen, with the help of town management, as that is what they are there for, has made the right decision. Oh, I thought the decision was made by the Board of Selectmen. Oh, well. Well, we don't, we, it was made by the Board right, of Selectmen. Right, right. So they're, they're so the ones that should be complimented about making the right decision. Well, then I compliment the Board of oh, Selectmen. Oh, there you go. But we can't confer with people. Give yourself a pat on the back. Fred, <laughs> oh, yeah, Mr. Mr. Latt. If I went into the office and said, can I have Ed Tinker's phone number or his email address, would they give it to me or would they say, Give me your question and I'll forward it. It's forwarded through the office. Okay. I, d I don't believe that we would publicly uh, hand out phone numbers for a private corporation. That's just not the name of the game. Well, if, 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 well I can tell you right now that if I was the head of that organization and we suddenly started receiving because people wished to do it, five or 6,000 phone calls a week, for one, for one particular town, I'm pretty sure I would terminate the contract very quickly. Well, in order to generate 6,000 phone calls a week, we'd have to be a city of a million people. Not necessarily. Uh, come on. That's a third of the total town you're talking well, about. You know, I, yeah. I, you know that's I worked for a lot of towns in New Hampshire, and I can tell you one town I worked for, you know, had 6,000 residents, and we had 4,000 uh, appeals to a, to a years of, or to a revaluation of the town. Mm -hmm. So wow. it, it's not far-fetched, it can happen. <laughs> and but unfortunately, you don't want it to. Yeah. Tell me, yeah. in that town, did they have a town assessor full-time, or did they outsource it? No, very few towns have, have a full-time right. assessor. Right, that town you were just referring to with the... They did not have it. They had a contract assessor. Okay, so it was outsourced. Yeah. Okay, right. it's so very interesting. As yeah. most towns in New Hampshire do. It sounds yeah. like that town did a terrible job of who they hired to do the assessment. Actually, no, the assessment was pretty good. Just had the, Two the economy collapsed oh. a couple of months after the assessment was done, so. Uh, yeah, since people couldn't talk to him directly to his face, yeah. they decided to get formal and, and make a formal complaint, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas before, that would just be resolved face to face. It's what one would Some normally call a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. So a citizen will not be able to contact uh, yeah. so Ed directly. That's well, what the nature yeah. of your question yeah. is. Right? So to that extent, it's changed. Up until this arrangement. Well, and a citizen, even before, could not walk through the door and talk to Ed. That's just not the name of the game. Well, that is that, just, no, that's, that's, that is no, what that, that is not the name of the game, and no, I want I, to make that very clear. It is not the name of the game. Talking to 
Ed had a regular work schedule. He was there 40 hours a week, and he had things to do. When you walk through the door, if he's engaged with something else, he's not going to break that up and come talk to you. But I can wait. But I, I have to. Before. If I can. So wait, 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 wait. It's Mr. Ladd has the floor. Yeah, but. Anytime I went in that office, I could talk to him directly and get the answer I if saw. He's, if, if he's not busy, busy, that's correct. If he wow. was busy, you couldn't. And I've seen people turned away because he was busy doing something else well, and couldn't break into it. Yeah. But that's, I have not found that to be the normal course of events in my experience. I've always found them very solicitous and very available. And that's because we don't have a lot of complaints. Wow. Well, yeah. Then he shouldn't be too busy to if we talk have, to him. We have only a few. <laughs> we have only... If he had, you happen to walk, I can think of an instance where I saw someone walk in one day and demand to see uh, the assessor, and he was in the other room with another client, and they said, too bad, he needs to come out here now. No. Give me your name, your address, your telephone number, he'll call you as soon as he's finished. That's a different kind of person than Bob Ladd. Bob Ladd yeah. Well, I know, I understand Bob's a different kind of person, but that's, that's beside the point. Yeah, and, 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 and I have to say, so am I. I mean, I've stopped in many times to see Ted, I mean, uh, Ed, and... Uh, Many of those times he was available, popped out, said hi, we talked for a bit. Yeah, whatever. if he's available. Other times, right. oh no, he's in his office with so-and-so. I was like, okay, I'll stop back later. Right. No big deal. And I think most of the town of Hampton is more or less along that same um, behavioral standard, if you will. Yeah, it's not, uh, a, it's I, not a situation. I'm not saying there isn't anyone in Hampton that wouldn't be demanding, but I'm sure that well, that's a minority. We don't have anybody in, in New Hampton who's, who's <laughs> demanding. They all want information and they're, at, they're asking to receive it. Very politely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very rare that we have anyone who gets that excited that, you mm -hmm. know, we have to call the police, but we have to do it <laughs> a couple of times, uh, not because of assessing, because of other reasons. If, if they need the assessor, they'll get in contact with the assessor, or the, the assessor yeah. will get in contact well, with them. The, the citizen himself cannot now if it's outsourced. That's what I'm hearing, right? The well, citizen he's, cannot. If he's contact. not there at the time they walk in, that's correct. But if he is there, we, we could. He's still going to be accessible. Okay, great. Right, right. So we just need to have someone standing outside of town hall to send out an internet alert whenever he arrives. <laughs> is that a fixed time each week so people would be aware of it? Yes, yes it is. Does he come in yeah. a different day each week? It depends upon the need. I mean, it's, we, we do have a schedule that's provided to us by MRI, and um, he shows up once a week. He is available during that time. Um, Ed, you want to speak? Oh, no, that's fine. I, I just wanted to let you know that, you know, uh, our response to any property owner's question, again, is, is pretty quick, right? Okay. With Charlene or the clerk, um, Beth, getting a hold of me. Um, also, you know, the, pot the potential of responding to the property owner to their email, you know, is, is, a, is an option. I mean, that we can do that oh, yeah. directly yeah. if there's a, a need to schedule an appointment. Right. Or have a set up a meeting. I think people are basically uncomfortable with losing your astounding professional and personal touch. Well, uh, that's why we're asking what hours are you going to be few, here and things like that. Maybe you know? a few are. He's here every Thursday. <laughs> every Thursday? Every Thursday. All day? Make it, yes. Okay. So and that's the holiday. Is, is right, that first. published on the website that he's there Thursdays? I can't tell you without looking at the website. Right? Oh, okay. uh, probably not at this point. I, I suspect it's probably not, but that's... Yeah. Well, it's now on cable TV, it's channel yeah. point two. So, so we're making progress. <laughs> I think everybody in town now knows. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Ed will be here on Thursdays from 8 to 5? 8 right? to 5. Okay. So everyone join in to town on Thursday to see Ed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Mr. La uh, Mr. Morrow. Ed, um, based upon what the town manager said, <clears throat> In the past, when somebody was really busy and they're in a meeting, which is the way it should be, you can't break in, and you shouldn't, because right. that is a thing that has to go. Right. <clears throat> but he was here five days a week, mm -hmm. so it'd be a little easier to then get you during the free time. My concern is, I come in, you're not here, it's in one of your off days. I'm making the whole thing up, obviously. And the clerk and the other person cannot answer my question, so I really need to speak to you. Mm -hmm. So they, I cannot send, I cannot send the note to you. Somebody in the town office with that role will send it to you, correct? With, with the e with your email with or a phone call, with email. either your email address to respond or a phone number, I can correct. give you a call. Now, what I would like to know is, 
I hope that the email doesn't sit there for a week and nobody gets back to you. I, I assume right. that when the day is, we have notified such and such, he will get back to you within a day. And you will get back to the person, hopefully by a phone call. They may not be home, so you leave a message and you send them an email. I think where Brian was coming from, and it's my background in it, right. when you have a problem, and I'm an irritated appraiser, ready to get the police, and, she, and Fred's on the phone, and she, I'm going to get him. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. So, so, so whatever. Face to face is the best discussion you can ever have, period. I found out in work when we were doing a thing up here in Portsmouth, we had people in Boston. The first video we had, it was us five against you, five idiots in Boston, and the five idiots in Boston against the five jerks up in Portsmouth. And I learned that the hard way. If you, and I knew it was, and I was the manager, and it never happened again, because I allowed that to happen. Because face to face over the screen, it was awful. Went down to Boston every single time and the problems went away. The face to face. So if I'm an appraiser, I really want to talk to you and you, you can, ex sometimes on the phone, you, I've only got five minutes, you can blah, blah, and go on. That doesn't satisfy me in reference to, well, but you're only there one day a week and you're busy that one day of the week, I can't get to see you at all. That's a potential, is that not true? Um, yeah, but I think the understanding is that if, if you come in uh, that week and want to meet with me or the assessor, you would then schedule an appointment for the actual day that uh, we're going to be there. Do you have a schedule so we people know you get your book so I might be put off for three months or two months or two well, weeks? Well, but Charlene or, or Beth, they'll, they'll be able to do that for you. I'm asking the, the devil's advocate questions by design. Yeah. Don't, don't misinterpret okay. them. Don't be offensive. So but you could say, he's going to be doing this all day, all day, he comes in once. So you, you won't be able to see him, David, for three weeks. I assume that will never happen. I don't believe, yeah, that should never happen. It's a that silly advice. Right. Sir. Well, there are more, there are more, uh, there are times I imagine a cycle like there isn't everyone's work where you're busier than other times. During, yeah. of course, during the year there's right. different times. So there may times be times when busy. you do experience a three week delay. And, it, and I wouldn't, response wise or meeting wise, I, I wouldn't say. So you'll, you'll put a priority on responding, at least saying, well, I'll, I'll get back to you by X date kind of thing. Well, email or phone right. responding would be very quick. What about the potential if you're real busy on that Wednesday, excuse me, right now? You say, well, I'll come in tomorrow and meet just with you, Mr. Morrow. Uh, well, that Can you do that, or do you have to have a contract to do that? Well, the contract's in place. It's, it's based on hours. I know the contract's hours, in so place. My question would, is, could you come in the next day and talk to me in person on Thursday? I mean, it's it's the, well, Scott can answer that, but the potential is to, to contact Scott um, to relay well, the, well, the need to... Well, we're contacting to, Scott. Let, let's have Scott speak. Yeah, Scott. Thank you very Please much. Please come on up to the mic. <clears throat> Use this one, Scott. Scott Marsh, I'm with Municipal Resources. I've been with the firm for 20 years. I was an appraiser for 10 years before that. Um, Municipal Resources, Inc. I believe it is incorporated. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, we work in 20 different communities. We now have a staff of 10. I understand your concern with the change as this has happened in numerous communities that we've gone in and done the assessing market. We do not have a taxpayer more than 24 hours to be contacted. We do have work email. We do have work cell phones so that people can get in touch with us, whatever the community wants us to do. If they want us available by email and phone, we have business cards with our work email and our work phone numbers so that people can contact us directly. It's whatever the community wants. We work with each town depending on what they want. Some of them want different layers and approaches. In this case, you already have a great staff that's here in town. <clears throat> a lot of the communities we work in, there is nobody else in town, just us, that comes in one day a week. So we don't want anybody waiting. Also, um, we work in several surrounding communities. Ed is working in those surrounding communities. So yes, he's here on Thursdays, but on Tuesdays, he's in Rye. So if a taxpayer couldn't meet him on Thursday, but it could meet him on Tuesday, Ed can leave Rye, come down, meet with the taxpayer, and then go back to Rye. So that's part of the advantage of what we do where we have localized staff that works in several of these communities. So we try to, again, public is our job too, is Thank we you. want that part of it. Did that answer your question, Dave? Um, that he's available even if it's not Thursday? 
One thing that can, I, I liked a lot what you said, but one thing seemed to contradict what Fred said. And Fred was doing a great job. Don't misinterpret sure. this. I think I heard two different yep. things. Fred says, you go through these people, we're not going to hand out names, we're not going to hand out cards. And yet you're telling, well, we, That's, can, we have that option if that is something the town wants to do. But if, so if they, whatever your process so is. So that, is that the selectman's option or your option? It would be your board's. We, so we do what the town wants us to do. So yeah. basically, the town's saying, we don't want you to do that. And you're telling me you can do that. But what you're talking is the people. Like, us, the selectmen are going to make that decision. Well, hold on a second. Yes, right? no? I, it, what, does the contract include some of that kind of contact at, in terms of the price that we're paying? Yeah, it's an hourly contract. Okay, so, so once we exceed those hours, we'll be paying for it, whether the contract is face to face, by email, or whatever. It's still going to be the same fee. Correct? I believe so. Okay, so once you go over the threshold of approximately four hundred dollars, right? Uh, you're gonna be paying Correct, and that's why per hour. What this is, is the first year, so as what is your select board member what is the hourly rate? I, I don't know to be honest with you. The, the, uh, no, I don't contract. know that, but, but again the, the estimated hours are at this point. I got the estimated hours. Well okay. What what is the per hour contract rate once we exceed the threshold? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's the same as. Uh, I'm not know. sure. Yeah, I, I don't handle that. Chrissy, end do you know the answer to that? I don't have the contract. Okay, that's very interesting. Yeah. It the only bottom. gives sums. Pardon? It only gives sums. It doesn't say by the. Oh, yeah, I, I, when I read it. Oh no, I'm sorry. Here we go. I thought it was specified. It. Uh, special condi under special conditions, oh, that has to do with data. The cost be 125 per hour, except for the defense of utility values. I say I know what you're asking. I don't see that as far as their fee, what they're charging. So it's completely silent on the question of citizen contact and interaction of questions and so forth, in terms of right. how much time you spend doing that. Well, it's, it's our first year here, and to find out, that's why it's, it's a lot of these, as you talked about, approximations, and we think it will only take this much time, and if it's substantially more or less, we will go back and sit at the table with the board to renegotiate because if it takes substantially less time, then okay. we're not going to charge you for time. So you anticipate not. the contract is, is kind of like in an uh, incubation stage and is subject to change over the next year or two? Typically Pretty they do, yeah. yeah. Well, when we, yeah, when we start new towns, okay. it's, okay. it's tough that first year to know exactly how much time it's going to take. Mr. Warburton? Uh, excellent. And, and you just made me think of something else very important why this is still disturbing to me. We had a case at Hampton Beach about 25 years ago, which cost the town a lot of money. The amount of time that that, that organization took with the assessor's office was tremendous. So if we're talking 325 to 400 hours, that could go and that could be gone in two weeks versus having a full-time assessor in the office and he works Monday through Friday and it doesn't matter if Ed works on it for three weeks, we're paying him an annual salary. See, this is the point I'm getting to, exactly what I think you're on that line, is that 325 hours to 400, we're talking 10 weeks where Bob's point, like the number of residents we have in this town, I, I, I'm not having a good fuzzy feeling about it. And I, and I appreciate, I love what you said though, the opportunity to have Ed and Scott, Scott is, Ed works for you? Does yes. Ed work here? Yeah, because we have 20 layers of management this time. I just want to make sure it's going. So Ed works for you. So the point is, we can get to you. But here's my other question. Somebody on High Street tonight is sitting watching this and said, oh, Brian, you're right on. Uh, can I call you municipal resources next week directly? Never mind, Ed, take it. Can I call the municipal resources? I can call them right up and get somebody on the phone. Yeah, then our number's available right now. See, this is the point to your point that's going to end up happening. And, and I'm telling you, it's going to be a nightmare. You're going to go into Steve LeBrant. I'm just using Steve. Steve's going to have a voicemail at Mr. Resources. He's going to forward it to the guy that's not in the office. It's going to go to this, and then it's going to go to Scott, who's on vacation. It's going to forward the ad. I'm telling you. I, I've seen it. I've worked at enough have I have had I have Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, yeah, you do, but <laughs> I'm saying hold on, everyone. Here. Mr. Here. Warburton has the about. floor. Are you but yeah, done, Mr. Warburton? Yeah, almost, but Steve's right, but you have it. But I'm saying the residents that are just sitting at home or, or going to work every day, they don't have to. So they're going to look on, Regina, you know, the social media is huge. They, oh, this is where resources? I'll go on. I'm, I'm home having a coffee at 9 in the morning. I'm going to call them direct. That's the point I'm trying to say. And I, I've got to feel comfortable that this is... I know we have a contract and all this stuff, and I think your questions are very valid in where we're going. But I just, 
that customer service, I'm in customer service, and let me tell you something, it is huge, and it, it's got, okay. if, if it's, if it's, if it goes awry, we have enough trouble with all these, with enough monies in these towns. We've got to be comfortable with it, and I'm not feeling comfortable with it. Okay, well, first of all, I am not going anywhere with it other than my job, which is to make sure right. that the relevant facts are understood by the entire committee. Yep. That's where I'm going, okay? If you guys want to take those facts off in various directions, that's your choice, not <laughs> mine. Now, does anyone else wish to speak? I'm Mr. Frank. Yes, I would just like to say, uh, and I understand where everyone's coming from, but isn't our job as the Budget Committee to review this, look at numbers, not get into a philosophical discussion on what if after the selectmen made a determination, a decision, and we should just move on. I mean, this is a, a conversation that should be done on the side, no, not during a budget meeting. You know, that's my, my, that's I my feeling. I second that if it's a motion. It's not a motion. <laughs> no. I'm not a motion. Mr. Ladd. Mr. Ladd. My thought would be to allow it to happen for years so you can experience it. What we're doing. And <laughs> go from there. We'll have, need to have some real-time data to assess it, to use a pun, after a year. You, you know, I think over the years, um, streamlining a lot of the services that are available to the public online, um, as you know, we have yeah. GIS yeah. online, we have vision appraisal yeah. online. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of functions that help the property owner on a daily basis where they don't have to come in. Like I remember when I first got here back in the day when things weren't online and line, people were lined up waiting to, to get assistance. Um, if it comes down to uh, property owners having specific questions for me, um, you know, rest assured that, and it, it, it's happened since, um, that I will immediately uh, respond. Uh, MRI will immediately respond. So we've done that up to this point, and I think we will continue. What you're seeing that. here, and it's not so much that we we don't believe MRI won't respond, so much as we want you to respond, because we're kind of suffering from postpartum depression right. with you no longer being a full-time employee. <laughs> you. you had to use that word. So I, 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 and what just happened? Thank you. <laughs> So, so far it's been, it, it has been me that has but responded we're, we're to We're glad to see inquiries. our son going up and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I have an additional question if no one else does. Uh, what happened? One more. Oh, Mr. Moore, excuse me. When you were just talking about that, and I, it still comes down to the fact that I agree we should look into it. I agree we should have it for a year and do a test model like Bob says. But I would think some sort of a focus with, but the big one was when you have assessment, when's our next assessment done due? Uh, you mean the, the town-wide revaluation? Yes, sir. Right now it's scheduled for 2021. 2021. So this year is going to be really smooth. I'm, I'm cheating because I don't know about assessment. You get a few homes here and you apply them. The next year, no big deal. It's 21 where the nightmare is going to hit you. Right now, there's not that many people are going to see you, but when I would interpret when you do an assessment and there was 10% of the people may not like it, I'll use a number I made up fictionally, then these 10% of people want to see you Wednesday, Well, next week. I'm making this up, Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand. But as part of a revaluation, though, there would be a f format laid out where new values would be sent to the property owners. Correct. They would schedule, if they so choose, a hearing to come in and discuss their assessment. And who's at the hearing? You? Well, there would be multiple people at the hearing because right. of the size of the community. Any community, it wouldn't be just one person. So they don't, they don't go, initially I would think I would have gone to you to have a, my first face to face and get a more better understanding before I Well, I would, well, I would say that's after abatement time or end of the year time, but revaluation time, it's a different type of process. It's, it's more uh, uh, community wise questions from property owners, a whole new set of values for everybody. Yeah. Um, it's a different than a one on that type of thing. So it would be a, a large scale. I personally have never had a problem. I think you've done a great job I up to now. Okay. We're just worried about the future. But everything right. you've done, I've always been happy. never even been done to see you. Because I'm very impressed with the quality of what I saw, the house being assessed and the taxes. You see, we miss you. But uh, tell me, uh, you know, there's something to do with a, a, a baseline evaluation or something like that, which could cause a town-wide revaluation to take place. 
before the scheduled? Uh, uh, well, there's ratios that are looked at on an right. equalization. What's that ratio and called again? Ratios that are looked at. Excuse What's that ratio called again? Well, the equalization ratio. There we go. Okay. So uh, right That's now we're pretty close to that equalization ratio where my kick off the timeline evaluation. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I believe you are below the. Below, the we're below but close, right? Well, uh, no, I actually believe you're below we will be the recommended level that the right. DRA likes to see, yeah. which is 90 below to 100. Close. So yeah. it's likely the assessment, the timeline assessment, is going to occur prior to the scheduled 2021 date. It potentially could, that? depending on the board's decision. We're likely to have a timeline assessment before the scheduled date of 2021 right. yeah. because yeah. of this equalization rate. I just wanted to highlight that. Um, I am wondering, um, and perhaps this is for Mr. Welch to answer, uh, this reorganization is going to happen, yes or no, regardless of whether the budget is a default budget or the proposed budget? Reorganization has already happened because it's like that reorganized. Right. And so all of the associated numbers are reflected in the default budget, true? Yeah, no, that's correct. Okay. So all, the, all the numbers that are, that are required in the new statute are reflected in the default budget. Right, and which includes whatever is necessary to, to do the uh, outsourcing of the assessment. So, therefore, we have no choice as a budget committee. The town voters have no choice as voters with regard to whether this outsourcing takes place or not. It's just that simple. It is our place, isn't it, David? Yes. To understand and encourage other citizens to understand how our government functions, and in that way, it's important to reveal this changeover. And hopefully we've covered, covered it entirely tonight. Uh, is there anything else? I would just Mr. Ladd. You would have to know the hourly rate when you hit the agreed number of hours. Yeah, that is an odd absent item from the contract is the hourly rate. A lot of our contracts will do a flat rate for the first year and uh -huh. the maximum amount of hours. Right. So I guess there is an hourly rate if you divide the hours into the so is that how you would come up with it if we went beyond the, the uh, floor? Well, it depends on what, every town is a little bit different on what mm -hmm. they do in different staff levels of ours. Like you already have an assistant assessor and a clerk. Yeah. If we were providing those, they have a different hourly rate than somebody at Ed's experience level and those types of things. So what would be Ed's hourly rate, I guess, is the question. I, I really don't know. I don't okay. set those figures. Did I get that question right, Mr. Lloyd? Yes. I'm, yeah. I just don't know how you do the math beyond your 350 or four hours. If you don't know what the rate is, right? Anything else? I Mr. Just, Walburn. Your, your point was probably the best of the whole discussion as far as what you just said for the public at home. And this is why you're absolutely right. Either way, it does not matter. Because if we have a default budget, this still happens. And that's why when you say, just move on, well, that's the problem. A when you sign a contract, that gets included in a default budget. And the taxpayers have no say about it. So your point's well taken, but we can at least address the fact that these are the things that are happening. And it, it's just, I don't know, it, it's going to be another discussion at the final review because I've had probably 70% of my questions answered on this issue, but I'm going to wait to the final review. So the uh, assessor, right, has now uh, been, it's an absolute position because we're outsourcing it, right? It's now absolute, the, the full-time assessor position. No, I don't believe it is. So I'm not going to get into a philosophical discussion. I'm not either. I just want to know if the position is the still position open. The position still exists. So it's still open if yeah. some, if, if, I mean, if someone. That is if, correct. If, uh, if a superstar version of Ed comes down the road, we could hire him and give it MRI subsequently. I suppose, but I'm not planning on shooting off. Well, I'm not planning on it either. I'm just <laughs> just wondering what the situation is fully. It's a select list. Yeah. Any, anything else, gentlemen and He's ladies? He's got a dollar on the line item. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, anything else on assessing generally, please, the budget that is? Well, I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I'd stop at everything else on assessing. Yeah. I don't know if I'd say I'm generally pleased, but you can say <laughs> everything else I would assess. I agree with that. Did I use the word please? You said generally please, didn't you? I don't so know. Generally please. I thought, oh, all right, whatever you said. <laughs> Comma please. It was useful <laughs> anyway. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming Thank in you. and helping us with our budget. Ed, beautiful to see you again. I love your watch. Thank you. That's nice. <laughs> Take care. Thank you, Scott. Thanks for coming. Okay, next on our agenda is, uh, as you know, gentlemen, we have... Uh,
cost for gas and diesel yes. throughout the budget. Right. And there's a magic formula in the Excel spreadsheet, which Christy plugs in. Uh, right, Christy? Uh, which is basically the per gallon cost for gasoline and diesel. And I think she's going to discuss that right now. Because we had a tentative number that we're using, yeah. but no. we're going to firm it up in December. It's and guess what, folks? It's December, so yeah. you know, we're going to hit a firmer number now, I guess. What do you think, Chrissy? Sure. Okay. okay. So I have the total gallons as of the end of October, and the average price per gallon is actually the same as what was put in the budget. It, it's uh, 226 for, I think I might have forgot that one sheet. Oh, darn. Um, it's two dollars and twenty six cents for unleaded. That's the average for gasoline. Yeah. For what unleaded. Is, what is the federal tax that you're not paying? I don't have that off the top of my head. What is it? We don't pay forty eight cents or something like that. So for those who are trying to convert it into gas pump price, that you see, add forty eight cents to it, and that's the actual. It's a state tax too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, two, it, five. Two. Two taxes. Yeah. So that's why that number sounds low, is because it doesn't right, include yeah. the taxes right. that you normally pay at the pump. Right. Okay. Two seventeen is what you're saying, right? Two twenty-six. Two twenty-six for gas. Yeah. For unleaded. Yeah. Unleaded, yeah. Yep. And diesel is two eighty four, I believe. Diesel is what? Two eighty four. No, yeah, no. see it's over three at the pump three. Oh yeah, same with the gas and light. Yeah. You know, somewhere in there. Excellent, Tim. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Yeah, oh, Comments on. Uh, Hold on, I have it right here. Oh, the paper okay. I was looking for, sorry. All right, so it's 2 um, 26 for uh, the regular unleaded motorcycles. Use the unleaded 3, which I think is premium, but it's unleaded 3 on the bill. And that's 284. Mm. And then diesel is 257. I'm sorry. I think oh, I said 284 a minute ago. The diesel is 257. Oh. Is what the town is paying. The town, right? Yeah. Right. Because we don't pay the tax. That's correct. Right. So um, with the adjustments, if you'd like, I could pass this out. I just did this real quick. But basically, we can make, if the budget committee chooses, based on that and the um, gallons that were used through November and then prorated out for the end of the year, we can make those following those adjustments in that FAR column there to so all of the um, gasoline and diesel lines if you would like to do that. What did you say, the, the mass tax is right now, mass tax currently uh, on gas? I don't know what the gas tax no, is. New Hampshire, I would mean. Well, I'm about to tell you. I'd have to look at it. 45? The total federal and state gas taxes appears to be 52 cents, as you can see on the monitor. No. Well, I can't see it on the monitor because it's too far away. <laughs> However, my, well, it's my, much closer my, to you my now, David. My statement is, I paid two forty-five, and it was two forty-three for regular gas. So you subtract forty-five from two forty-three, you're under two dollars. So two twenty-six is your. your when I what I did to come up with the two twenty-six, I took all of um. I literally <coughs> we use Wex. Yeah. It's a program. The, it's like a credit card type of a program, but basically we chose to use WEX because a lot of the programs that are out there, you would have to file an abatement each year for your tax. This program does that for you. So the, it, the immediate cost is reflected right at the pump and then again in our bill that we receive on a monthly basis. So I took January through November um, and those are all the gallons there, it, but then like I said, I prorated them out. Um, so I divided it by the gallons by the 11 and then multiplied it by 12 to get the gallons for each of those to come to those numbers. And then I took the price that we paid from January 1 through 1130 and did an average in the spreadsheet and it came to 226 mm -hmm. for unleaded. And so that's why I put forward 226. And I think it shows that it's fairly steady because when I did it for the Board of Selectmen, that was in August, I believe, it was 226 in that book too. Usually at this point, we're adjusting it because ha the number has adjusted, but it has stayed steady from mm -hmm. the so entire year, basically. As you can see now, David, on the monitor, right? No, I can see it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> With the federal tax of 18.4 cents a gallon yeah. yep. and the Hampshire tax of 23.83, added that up, basically 
52 cents. Okay? 52 right. point something. So call it 52. Correct. If you add the proposed gallon price of 226 plus 52 cents, that's 278. That's what it should reflect on the pump, if you want to relate to that. That's what I was reflecting okay. to what I paid yesterday. 278. It was 245. Right. I used an average for the whole year, though. I understand. Sometimes we paid a dollar ninety-four on it. I understand, and, and of course, well, the cost of oil today was has been down now for a couple of months. It took a while to start reflecting the gas pumps, which is why you're seeing the prices coming down. But it really took a big hit uh, today uh, in the markets. Uh, <coughs> it's close to falling under fifty dollars a gallon, <coughs> which is a pretty big low. Mr. Frank, you have a comment, please. Will your numbers change uh, as uh, gas prices rise in the next four to six months? Once the budget set, the number is what we have. The the cost could change, though, and then it will right. be absorbed somewhere else, but yes. Yeah, because OPEC is meeting this week or early next week, and they're going to lower <coughs> production, which means the gas pump prices will escalate. Right. We and used Kuwait to left at OPEC. Apparently, because it doesn't like them trying to squeeze the market. Yeah. And it's also noteworthy that uh, the United States being, I think, now the number one oil exporter in the world. Oh, absolutely. That's true. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it, Fred? It is. No, producer. Yeah. You're the number one producer. Oh, right. Sorry. Thank you. The number one producer in the world of oil is the United States. And as the price goes up, the United States starts producing more oil because it becomes more profitable because we're a capital market. All right. Unlike, unlike, OPEC, which is, of course, representatives of non-free market capital economies. They try to monopolize everything. So. It was up about three months, four months ago. <coughs> almost, it just hit 70, 71, to a barrel. Now the last I saw it. Recently. Oh, today it was down to 52. Yeah, I was going to say 52. Yeah. That's huge drop. Yeah. And right now what we're talking about is a projection for next year. We're not talking right. anymore. So. It, 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 there's always a bit of uh, crystal ball gazing when you do a projection, and so if if you don't like, you know, Christy used a particular formula, uh, but you know I think that formula was based on months where gas was stabilized on the upper end, uh, and so that's why it's consistently coming out that way. Mm -hmm. It'll take a few months for your formula to actually reflect the lower prices. Um, so those are my general thoughts on what's been presented so far. Any other comments? Christy, if we uh, decide to change the uh, projection on the gallons, that will be no big deal to you to make that change, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, let's see the sheet that you just gave out. These That's just showing the adjustments that could be made to those lines if you like the logic that was used. And it is the same <laughs> logic that we've used over the last couple of years. If you remember, a few years ago, or maybe my first time sitting here, we really started to dig deep and track gasoline because it had never really been tracked before, how much was being used and the prices yeah, that were well. being paid. <laughs> a lot of so time. now we do. And so in the past <laughs> two years or so, we we haven't put an inflator. There was always an inflator. There was always, you know, a 10 cents or an 8 cents in case the price did go up or did go down. But since we started to track it, it's been the practice that we've just put the average cost in as opposed to not, not put in any type of inflators. So that's up to the committee how they would like to proceed. But that's the process that has been done so for the past few years. So back the same to the handout that you just gave us, these are, are these gallons that I'm looking at? Those are just dollars. I was just showing you the dollar amounts um, if you wanted to choose because it's showing you that those, those numbers should list. reflect what's in the budget books on those pages for those accounts. You said dollar numbers. amounts, Christy? Yes, yeah. those Thank are dollar you. amounts. Yes. Really, but you have the gallons. I have the gallons, yes. Right. And I think that would be more useful to us. It to wasn't in a pretty spreadsheet yet, so I yeah. didn't pass it out. Okay, I'll take so it just, could you just email it to me and I'll get it out to everybody, yes. the gallon piece. Yes. And we can figure out uh, subsequently, uh, down a look, we can wait another month, basically, right. Right. Uh, to decide. Yeah, yeah, we'll have that. another month of information. So, you uh, might not have another month of information that quickly. Well, well, yeah, it'll be a month away from now. <laughs> <laughs> the final review is November or uh, January 9th. January 9th. Right? So that's a month plus three days. Scary. Uh, five days, four days, whatever. Quick, easy. Mr. Le uh, Mr. Moore, you wish to speak? Quick question, Christy. Yes. Easy one. When you get your total gallons, you probably go back to 2017, 18, 
15 and just see if there's a trend and if there's the town burning the same number of gallons on the average are we spending more gallons or with more efficient cars in our list and police cruisers with a better amount are we going down how do you do that? I assume you do a couple of years, you average out the total gallon usage. We, yeah, we've only been doing this for a couple of years. So we only have, I think, probably maybe two or three years worth of data. But we do, ha last year, um, I believe the spreadsheet had a comparison of at least two years on it. Good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on gasoline and diesel? Thank you very much. Um, now we're going to talk about fixed assets, right? Christy, tell us about how you process fixed assets. How we process fixed assets? Yeah. Um, on a quarterly basis, every time a bill comes in, we have sheets that go out to the departments for them to fill out when they have a bill that is for a fixed asset or in accordance with the fixed asset policy. Um, we also have my account, the individual who does accounts payable for me. She's my gatekeeper, so to speak. If a form doesn't come up, then we seek the form from the department. But the fixed assets are basically put into the software system based on the invoice that comes across the desk in the finance department when it is paid. So uh, it's up to the department head in filling out the form to decide whether any one or more purchases fits the fixed asset policy? No, that's what I was, Okay. I just said that the gatekeeper is in the finance department and therefore if a form does not come up and it, it f qualifies as a fixed asset, then we will put it in to the software whether the department has set the form up or not. It's just okay. easier if they set the form up. We okay. do it based on the bills that come across the desk when they okay. are paid. And, and who is determining the, because the, all these fixed assets are being identified so that they can be, among other things, uh, depreciated, right? Yes. Right. So, you know, every asset has a different kind of depreciation schedule <coughs> uh, or every class of assets, I guess is a better way of phrasing it. Uh, who is Has a, a different depreciation schedule, meaning what? Yeah. Well, it's a lifetime. It's all of, straight line. It's a lifetime of the asset generally. Mm -hmm. But then we have to decide, well, what's the lifetime of this asset? Correct. Kind of thing. And so that's when we would seek the help of a department head. If we don't have, like, we okay. know police cruisers, I don't remember the number of years, but we have a certain number of years that's for police cruisers. I will not say what it is because I do not recall off the top of my head. But we have that, and so we know the police cruisers have this long. If we don't, if someone does not hand in the form with the bill or without the bill, they can hand the form in as soon as they acquire the fixed asset if they choose. We will seek the department head to get the form filled out so that in, on the form there are all of the requirements that we need to classify the asset correctly and depreciate it correctly. And then when the auditors come in to perform okay. the audit, the thing Makes that sense. they do is go through all of, we have to give them a list, well they go through all of our check registers anyway, but then we also give them a list of 20,000 plus um, dollars expenditures or whatever threshold that they set for that particular year and so then they will pull out fixed assets that way too. Yeah. Check to make sure because we have to give them our fixed asset report with the depreciation on it. They will do the whatever spot check is required of them to make sure that all fixed assets have been captured in the year. If they have not then they will be captured then at the time of the audit. That makes sense. Well, I'm not suggesting it didn't. No, no, I, I just, just think it's very well done. Well, you asked the process, so that well, I'm, I'm just explaining the process everyone to you. understand it. Yeah. Common nice job, Christy. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we depreciate these assets based on the lifetime of the asset as estimated by the department head, basically, right? Yes. Okay. And there's a straight line depreciation method. Yes. Got it. So there's no, no particular issue there. We do this depreciation, and subsequently it populates our balance sheet, right? Yeah. Which we have yet to look at ever, as I know. The budget committee has never looked at the balance sheet. Maybe someday we would want to do that. Mm -hmm. In any case, any other questions on how fixed assets are done? Comments? Pardon, Regina? I said I've looked at the balance sheet before, and the financials every single year. Yeah, we haven't done this as a budget committee. Yeah, yet. you should. Yeah. The financials are very interesting. Yeah, exactly. The broader the view, the better. Uh, and I think future budget committees ought to do that. It's not like we're going to be. Uh, doing that this year. 
He'll be around next year, so you'll be in bringing that up. Oh no! Remember, I, I'm going to be dead. <laughs> You're going to be dead. According to Frank, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. You uh, volunteered that information. <laughs> <laughs> I said everyone dies, Frank. You get it next year. He, he, he didn't oppose you, Walter. <laughs> Who would? You know, I was laughing today and still thinking about that comment last night because so did you, so those of you who didn't watch the meeting, <clears throat> and I, I started adding up my age, and then I knew where he was going. He goes, I'll be, and I think I it said, I'll be dead when the school edition gets finished being paid for. And I'm like, well, that is 25 years and a million half a year. <laughs> and so so Frank, then Frank's over there adding it all up. And we, we were having fun with that, but that's where I came I'm glad you all had a good time with, well, my, with my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we're all set on fixed assets yes. right now, I guess, okay. right? Yep. Uh, Thank you. And uh, yeah. Christy, in generating that uh, the balance sheet, I assume that's, is that a problem? Or is it what, Cause a lot of labor on your part to do that. The auditors generate a balance sheet in the audit. I do not generate a balance sheet. Oh, okay, okay. It's an audit in the fi audited financial division. Okay, so we want the balance sheet. We look at the audit report. That's the yes. only, and that's the master record of the Correct. balance sheet. Okay, great. Super. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I was planning on looking at the audit anyway. It's online. Uh, no, for that other thing I raised. I'm going to bring that up. And we still have Plaza and Sanderson, right? Yes. yes. Boy, they've been oh, yeah. around a long yeah. time with us. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's it for uh, those are generators. A new business, other anybody, new business. I have to say, I'm sad to say I do. Uh, please bear with me. Uh, we have, uh, I guess, what would normally be a, a, the chairman's administrative decision to make, but I think the decision I have to make is a little bit more than administrative. It's actually somewhat judgmental. We have a member of this committee that has been absent five times consecutively. Yeah. One of those times, the third time, he was excused. The law says that any member on the budget committee that has, that has missed four consecutive meetings without being excused right. is automatically removed from the committee. We, there's no choice on that matter. But the judgment comes in since the, there was an excused absence in the third of those five did that restart the clock on consecutive yes. or not? Yes, it did. Yeah. Consecutive means consecutive, right. doesn't it? Yeah. So he didn't miss the fourth one because you excused him. So the clock starts again. Yeah, right. Is that, I think that's pretty obvious. I want to make we, it, we I want to everyone that. to agree. Yeah. Is that okay with that? Yeah. 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 So the RSA is very clear on that. Yeah. No, it's not. It just yeah. says four consecutive. Yeah. It doesn't. Four consecutive well, meetings. consecutive meetings. But if consecutive. he consecutive. goes to the fourth yeah. meeting and misses the first three, He's, you start the it restarts the clock. Right. right. So I don't think we need a... Can I ask a question regarding that? Yes, Frank. Why did you excuse him for that meeting? And what was the purpose of that? Well, that's, that's personal. That's right. You don't have to right. answer that. Okay. I'm sorry? He doesn't have to answer that. All you have to do is get permission from Steve, the chair. I appreciate that's it. it. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can decide what I want to answer or not. Thank you. On my own. I just asked the question. I'll, I'll answer you. Yeah. Uh, he had a legal obligations to take care of at that meeting. That's fine. You don't have to go any further. But it is not clear to me, and the reason I raise it is because it says uh, four consecutive unexcused meetings in which he was properly noticed. Now, all five of them he was properly noticed. All right? And the fact that he was excused means that meeting doesn't count in the formula. So if that meeting doesn't count, maybe it doesn't count relative to resetting the clock. Well, that's that, Stephen. Stephen, that's where the judgment comes in, and I don't want to be the sole judge on this. I want the committee to decide. So uh, it sounds like you say, "Well, let them go another couple of meetings, right?" Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. That's okay. absolutely true. That's great. That's great. Uh, any other new business? No. Okay. I'm going to see uh, Santa Claus Saturday with my granddaughter. That's not new business. That's projected business. That's different. Uh, Next meeting is Thursday, December 13. We are adjourned. Thank you, guys. Thank oh, you. That's very quick. Thank you. Nice job.